took, I took my shirt off because it was getting hot in the car. And then he says, I was trying to fix something. I said, yeah, I was fixing my shirt because a lot of times when you sweat, yeah, I was sucking in. Okay, all right. Would you agree that this is you? No? Okay. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. No. Oh, it comes loose. Oh, this okay. is a cheap belt, so it comes loose. So I was, just, I just fixed that. That's probably, that probably looks weird, but it wasn't like I was. Why would I expose myself to kids? It's July 14, 2022, and officers in Palm Coast, Florida, were called to a property to investigate a noise complaint. What they found was 48-year-old ex-church leader Alfonso Joseph, almost naked in the back of the car, with a 16-year-old boy. When officers shined their flashlights in the car. Both occupants were seen pulling their pants up. Here's what happened next. How's it going, sir? Hey, how are you? Hey, Stepping out of here for me? Shut the door for me? How's it going, man? You have any weapons on you or anything like that? No, 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 sir. You got ID on you? Yes. You have your ID on you? No. You don't have any ID on you? No, no, I don't think it's you. It's all right, sir. I'll get your name. You step over here. Go to my car right there. Okay. okay. Step over there. Just stand right there. Lean on the car for me. Put your hands on the car. Now I'm just going to pat you down for weapons, okay? Right. Here, right here. Stand on the car. Stand on the car for me. Do you have anything on you? No. Well, I have my phone on you. That's fine. Just leave it there. Are we being detained? Yes, that's right now. Here, I'm private property. Oh, you can put your hands on the car. Don't, don't lean on the car. Just put your hands on the car. Put your feet. Do you have anything on you? No. My no. Phone in my just your phone. 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 No weapons in there. What's that? Your headphones? Yeah. I'm just gonna put them back in there. So do we just have to leave for it? Yeah, right now I'm gonna get your information first and then we'll uh, figure out from there. Okay. okay. Alright, you go ahead and lean around the car for me. Turn around. Just lean on the car right there. Okay. What's your name? Alfonso. Alfonso. A L F O N Z O. Yeah. Last name? Joseph. Right. What's your date of birth? 11673. Alright, just stand right there for a second. What are you guys doing? Obviously it's kind of obvious. Who's with you? Huh? Who's with you? Um, just the plane, I guess. The boy later told authorities he had met Joseph on a dating app. Joseph had picked him up at a particular address and driven him to the golf course. So, uh, who's this guy? Um, a friend of mine. Okay, how old is he? Um, 18. Okay. Do you have a driver's license though? No. You don't have any kind of identification? No. Where's he live? Um, in the L section. Okay. So, what's his name? What's his last name? Um, I don't know his last name. I just always call him. Okay. So what are you guys doing out here? Uh, we're just chilling. That's all. Just chilling. It was getting hot in the car, so I just took my shirt off. Well, when I walked up, you were putting your shorts on. No, my shorts. Because a lot of times, in my shorts, they get kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. So I was like trying to fix them. Okay. Because when you see in the car, you get it get wet. It's sometimes give you a wedge. Okay. So we see how it looks. I come up. You two are in the back seat. Right. Because the front seat, um, we. The front seat is like far away from me, mm -hmm. so I was like, you know, just talking, communicating, trying to get to know him, and, um, and that was it. Let's be clear about what's happening here. This isn't innocent communication or friendly get-to-know-you chat. We're talking about a 50-year-old man communicating with a 15-year-old he met on a dating app. That's not normal behavior, and it's certainly not appropriate for a pastor or any adult. This attempt to downplay his actions as mere communication is a classic tactic to minimize the seriousness of what's really going on. It's important for officers to see through this kind of language and recognize the reality of the situation. So who is he to you? I just said. Where'd you meet him? Um, I met him um, a couple of days ago and then we wanted to meet up just to get to know him and that was it. Okay. Yeah. Nothing crazy, you know. Nothing crazy? So you met him online, you said? No, well, not online. I met him, like, we was in Walmart one day, and then... So, well. you guys just met up in Walmart? How did you guys just, like, face but, to face? When I met him online, um, in Walmart, then he, um, texted me online. So, how did he get your number? Who? Oh. He said he texted you. You guys met in Walmart, and then he started texting you a lot. Yes, online. Okay, so how did, so you guys were just both shopping at Walmart, and yeah. then you guys yeah. started talking in Walmart when you guys saw each other. Right. Okay. I asked him a few questions. He was like, he loved, loved this place, and he was like, telling me where he came from, and I was telling where I came from, okay. and then that was it. You guys exchanged phone numbers at that point, and yeah. Okay. 
And then so what you do, pick him up from his house? Yeah, or? I pick him up from his house. Because I worked late, so I said, well, um, maybe just come and talk over here. Okay. You know? Okay. And I didn't know it was a, a no trespassing yeah. sign. I knew it was a, it used to be a golf course. Yeah. And I, I didn't know it was a no trespassing sign, because other than that, I wouldn't have been over here. Yeah. Okay. How old are you? Um, I'll be 40, 48. Okay. What were you guys doing? Huh? What were you guys doing? We were just sitting back to see talking. And I told like I told the cop, I said, um, he took, I took my shirt off because it was getting hot in the car. And then he says, I was trying to fix something. I said, yeah, I was fixing my shirt because a lot of times when you sweat, your shorts get... Well, your car's on, isn't it? Yeah, but the AC is, you know... It's pretty new Toyota. I would have yeah, said it is pretty new. But sometimes it gets hot, so... Yeah, well, you guys have your pants down. I didn't you have, have my pants down. I, I kind of figure what's going on. I didn't have my pants down, though. No, he did. He had his pants down? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, so you not gonna tell me what's going on? No. That, that was, if I, it is, I, if it, if that's what you guys are doing, that's what you guys are going to do. Right. At some point. Right. It is what it is. Right. You know, people do it all the time, but you don't need to lie. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was sucking. Okay. All right. For a while, Joseph's trying to sell the officers the just chillin' story, but finally he decides to come clean and tell the truth about what was going on. He was ultimately convicted on a charge of lewd and lascivious battery on a victim younger than 16 but older than 12. He will be prohibited from living within a thousand feet of a school or park or any place where children gather. For our next case, we go to Ohio, where a local mechanic was on his lunch break near a park when a nearby woman noticed him hiding behind a pole with his pants completely down, looking at her and her daughter. As she tried to record the incident, he quickly ran back to his job to create an alibi. When the officers arrived, they spoke with the woman who explained that he had been hiding behind a pole with his work pants around his ankles. When she confronted him, he hastily pulled up his pants, pretending to fix his belt. Thank you, we'll take care of it. So he had a, he was by the newer behind one. Behind the newer one. He pointed at you guys watching you guys. Yes, okay. and then I noticed, and I grabbed my phone, and he quickly started putting his belt back on. Okay. You guys see a gentleman causing issues in the park and run this way? Is his name David? No. No David here. No, we're not talking about Luke. Can you turn it out whatever? I didn't see anything going on. Oh. Do you have an idea on you? No, I don't. Uh, um, we're, <laughs> we're investigating some sort of incident that occurred at the park. What's I your name? Here. Okay. What's Luke. your name? Been inside all day. Yeah, we just came out. What's uh, what's your social, Luke? What, what is that girl? And she kept staring at me. I was just sitting there on my phone. Yeah. Was because I fixed my belt. Twenty one seventy four, twenty two hundred DS. What were you doing over there? No, I just they we came out to the smoke break, so I was off the end, and I was fixing my belt. Maybe that's why. Within two minutes of the interaction with the officers, he mentions his belt the woman and kids and attempts to justify his state of undress as a simple wardrobe malfunction. But despite his efforts to spin the story, it's clear he's guilty as hell. I fixed my belt. I fixed my, I guess I, I fixed my belt. It came loose. So maybe that's what it, she thought I was doing something. Okay. Yeah, my bad. I just, I just fixed my belt. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. Well, was just, that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, they're claiming that you expose yourself to the kids. I think they just walked out. How far? I walked down to the end. Okay. She walked over to the car with her kid. Okay. I guess he pissed because he did have his pants down. Right. She said, I told you not to do that. So I turned around and walked back up here. Okay. Like I said, I did fix my belt. Why? Was, what was going on with your belt? Oh, it comes loose. Oh, this okay. is a cheap belt, so it comes loose. So I was, just, I just fixed that. That's probably, that probably looks weird, but yeah, it wasn't like I was. Why would I expose myself to little kids? I work here. Well, we just do that. Yeah, just, so, <laughs> what were you? Where were you at exactly? Right down at the end of the street. Okay. What were you doing at the street? There, just hanging out. I was out? just staying out. Look at my phone because okay. they were taking a smoke break. So I just walked down there, walked back, just hanging out. I've been inside all day. This is the first time I've got from outside. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever had a history of this or anything? Have ever? Yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm just asking. No, I mean, I don't know. I you. wouldn't do that. I watch people sitting over there smoking weed all day, and they don't get in trouble. Nobody called on them. So then you're gonna call me. Calling me if I'm staying at the end of the street. Just, but you understand where our point is with someone claiming that? Yeah, but that's false. Uh, Man, false I, we don't know that. Well, I'm telling you, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> 
So what I'm going to make sure I'm going to do is I'm going to go check every single one of those houses and make sure they have a camera or don't have a camera. And if I find that they do have a camera, I'm going to see if it looks over here. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that they didn't see what you are claiming you didn't do. Okay? Okay. And I'm going to make sure I clear that up. All right? There were indeed cameras pointing in that direction. And the officers saw what the mother claims to have seen. The next day, they went to the mechanic's home to notify him that the state attorney would prosecute him for his actions. Hey, so uh, you were being formally charged for the incident yesterday. Um, public indec indecency is a charge. It's an M4, uh, misdemeanor of fourth degree. It's uh, a step above like traffic citation. <clears throat> um, your court day is going to be uh, Monday. 9 a.m. is Municipal Court. Okay. That way. Sandusky Municipal Court. Okay, sorry, I didn't use it. Um, uh, typically, you would have to post bond, but because um, it's a um, lesser charge, you just have to sign a piece of paper saying that you go to court for it. You have to go to court and. Well, how can you do that if you have proof? We have proof. What's the proof? Go to court for it. I have to give a piece of paper for you. He was charged with indecent exposure and sentenced to just 12 months of probation. Let me know in the comments if you think this sentence is sufficient for the crime. Meanwhile, for our next case, we go to Onalaska, Wisconsin, where a man later identified as 30-year-old Josie Mann followed and inappropriately touched a 10-year-old girl in a Walmart. The mother confronted Josie, who fled the store. Surveillance video showed the mother chasing Josie, but there was no monitoring in the aisle where the assault occurred. Police reviewed the video and observed Josie going to a subway store inside the Walmart. They were then able to identify him by the debit card used in that subway and confronted him at his place of employment five months later. Is it just you today or do you got help? Uh, it's just me for the moment. Okay. Um, does the name Josie ring a bell? Yeah. Is, is he here? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I got to talk to him. Hey, Josie. Officer Flatten. This is a little bit more uh, urgent for me, so I decided to just come down and talk to you here. Um, I need to talk to you about an incident where you're my suspect. Okay. Do you have any idea what I'm referring to? Okay. You ever been to the Onalaska Walmart? Times, okay. Target. Okay. Um, in May, we got a complaint from a parent and a young girl at the Walmart in Onalaska that involved you. Anything ring a bell to that? Okay. Have you ever been at the Walmart where uh, you got chased out of the store? No. No? Would you agree that this is you? No? Okay. Is this your truck? Definitely not. No? So the incident is that you reported to us that you had grabbed a, a child's buttock in a grocery aisle. No? Okay. So we reviewed video and watched the suspect of this whole thing prior to this incident with the juvenile. It was inside Subway, bought a sub sandwich. Use your debit card. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Somebody used my debit card, you said? Well, you. In a Subway? Yep, on Alaska Walmart Subway. Okay. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. Dominic, you got taser? Stop! You stop! Stop! Get on the ground! Without hesitation, the suspect immediately turns around and bolts, trying to escape down the street. This sudden flight is a clear indicator of his guilt and desperation. Despite his futile attempt to flee, the officers managed to catch up to him and bring him to the ground, successfully making the arrest. He was ultimately charged with first-degree sexual assault of a girl under the age of 13 
and misdemeanor, resisting an officer. He was freed on a $2,500 signature bond and could face up to 60 years in prison if convicted. For our next and last case, on November 28, 2021, officers of the West Band Wisconsin Police Department received an attempt to locate from Logan County, Kentucky, where a 15-year-old girl went missing. Pings from her cell phone and a letter left by the girl pointed the police towards West Band. Officers waited at the residence of a known sex offender who they discovered was in contact with the girl via Facebook. The following footage is the perfect example of how to keep a predator talking. Okay. What is she to you? Daughter, friend, cousin? Um, she's a friend. A friend of yours? Um, okay. Her mom is a friend of mine. Um, she's a her mom is a friend of yours? Yeah. Okay. Are you taking her to her mom's right now? Or? Um, she got into a fight with her mom. I'm okay. just holding it there because she said that she was gonna like kill herself, whatever. She said she was, was gonna, gonna kill go. herself over the fight. So okay. I'm just scared. She's gonna stay with me for a couple of days and then stay with you for a couple of days. And then she was just gonna go back home. Okay, where does she live? Um, she's out of state. Oh, how? <laughs> like Illinois, Ohio, um, Kentucky, Kentucky. Oh my. So I was on my way to see my sister for Thanksgiving because she's in North Carolina. She's in North Carolina. This okay. shit just kind of happened. And, okay. You, um, and, you and mom are pretty close. Yeah. If, I mean, if you've, got the, if you've got the daughter's phone number, I'm assuming you guys are all pretty tight. Because her, yeah, because her, um, she was like really upset and everything. She lost her job. Okay. Um, well, too easy to be upset. I can understand that. And then really? she and her mom got into a big argument. Okay. And then she's like, well, her mom called her a mistake. Okay. And then she was just really pissed off, and then she like telling me that she was just gonna like she can't do it. She was gonna either run away, be homeless, or whatever. And okay. I figured, and uh, is it like a few months, a dating thing, like boyfriend girlfriend. Um, no, we're just on the way to friends. maybe get there, or huh? On the way of maybe becoming that, or no, it's just mutual friends, and that's just it. Just mutual friends, and that's it. Okay. The officer did a great job for keeping it light and acting as if it's not that big of a deal if he was trying to start a relationship with a teenager. By downplaying the situation, the officer skillfully lowers the suspect's defenses, making it more likely for him to reveal incriminating details. Did mom know that um, you had her? Or did her stepdad know? Her dad, uh, was, she was talking to her dad on the way here, okay. and she, he, she was explaining it to him about, um, about the situation. And he seemed okay with it. Okay. And her mom, uh, talking to her mom and everything, she seemed like her mom was like upset, pissed off, and everything. Okay. But um, but that was pretty much it. Like she was talking okay. to her family, and everybody was just making sure that she was safe or whatever. And okay. She's like, yeah, that's fine. And then you're gonna run her all the way back to Kentucky at some point. Uh, yeah. I could. I'd either I was gonna either drive her back down there or. Um, have her fly down. Have her fly down? Okay, or like meet someone halfway or shit like that? Uh, like she says she has a step aunt or a, another stepmom in Indiana. Okay. So that was another aspect to go to. Okay. So how did we meet this? <coughs> how did we meet her mom? Probably through Facebook. Facebook. Okay. I, I know I kind of asked you this before, but I mean, is there, are you guys working on possibly like mm -hmm. a dating thing here? With you two? No, I th no. She was just, because she was pissed off at her mom. I think that's what she was just trying to get her pissed off at, whatever, because mm -hmm. her mom was like, um, called her the mistake and everything. And I think that she was just trying to find a way to piss her mom off even more and just be like, well, f you and this, this, and that. So. so she just called you and said, come get me? Um. I mean, that's a lot of trust to just call somebody that. <laughs> I mean, to just call somebody on Facebook and say, hey, come pick me up from Kentucky. Uh, we just picked him up. He drove right past his apartment uh, rather than stop because we saw the squad cars waiting for him. Uh, we pulled him over. Neither one of them are acknowledging any sex has taken place, but she's 15, he's 30, 31. Um, thinking child enticement, maybe use of a computer to facilitate a sex crime. Um, she's at this point. It just did a real quick interview on the street. She's not saying anything sexual at this point, but I think she probably will when she settles in. Um, I'm going to have my guys impound his car to see what's in the car on an inventory search. And the chief would like the detective to do the interviews with her and him. The interrogation that followed revealed more important details, and officers were able to better paint a picture. 
This was not the first time that the man, later identified as 31-year-old Stephen Stathis and the 15-year-old girl, had met. Between September and November 2021, Stathis traveled from Wisconsin to Kentucky on multiple occasions for sexual encounters with the victim. He was ultimately sentenced to 15 years in prison and 10 years on supervised release afterward, after pleading guilty to using a computer to inducing a minor to engage in unlawful activity. Thank you all for watching and sticking with us through these unsettling yet important stories. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more updates and in-depth looks at important issues. Stay safe, stay informed, and we'll see you in the next video.